As an engineer, you want to be able to generalize a procedure. If you know how to solve problem A, you want to apply a similar solutions method to problem B, if you problem A looks like problem A. But in order to be able to generalize your solution method, you obviously need to understand what you are doing and how it works. It means not just follow some steps without understanding why you take those steps. Now, I've seen that we focus on this particular aspect of linear algebra, also in many of the previous videos. Not only the what should you do question, but also the why does it work like that question. And the concept and questions we are discussing in this video are the opportunity to really show that you understand this why question. Or, if you don't understand this yet, to learn this. We are looking into the problem of determinant base for call A. But the question is rephrased a bit. Is the given set base for call A or not? And of course, we will not only take the standard choice pivot columns of A. In order to be able to answer these questions, we really need to understand exactly what this means. Let's see. We have a matrix A, or rather, we do not have a matrix A. We only have the produced echelon form of A, and that is called as matrix B. So we do not know what the matrix A is, but we do know what the matrix B is. Well, B has four columns. If you do row reduction, the number of columns, of course, doesn't change. So A has also four columns, A1 up to A4. B consists of B1 up to B4. We know B1 up to B4, but we do not know A1 up to A4. Can we still find a base for call A? True or false? Four questions. Basis of call A is a set consisting of A1 and A3. Well, we do not know exactly A, but we, knew, we know B and we know that the dependence relations will stay the same. So we see B2 equals minus 2 times B1. So that means A2 equals minus 2 times A1. And we know B4 over here equals B1 plus B3, this one plus this one. So we also know A4 equals A1 plus A3. That means that the set uh, and B1 and B3 uh, you can immediately see that those are independent. So, since the set consisting of B1 and B3 is independent, the set of consisting of A1 and A3 is also independent. And A2 and A4 are linear combinations of A1 and A3. So, we know that this one is correct. A base of core A is a set consisting of A1 and A3 because it's independent and spans core A. It's basically the standard choice. But what about all those other sets? Are there also base for core A? Well, we've seen before that the number of factors in the base is always the same. So we need to look for sets with two vectors. What about the sets consisting of A3 and A4? Are they independent? Well, look at B3 and B4. As you see, B3 and B4 are not a multiple of each other, so that means that B3 and B4 are independent, so that means that A3 and A4 are independent. So now we have two independent factors in call A. The basis of for call A consists of two independent factors, as we saw already here. So the set consisting of A3 and A4 is also a basis for call A. So that's okay. Here we have, again, two factors in call A. The question is, is this a base for call A? It says consisting of A1 and A2. But now you see over here and over here that A2 is a multiple of A1. That means that the set consisting of A1 and A2 is not independent. So it means that this cannot be a basis for call A. This last one is a bit nasty. B1 and B3. Can that be a case for a base for core A? Well, they are independent, 
but now you have to be careful because you don't have A. Suppose A would have been the same as B, so suppose A would have been, uh, let's see, 1, 0, 0, minus 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 0. In that case, when you do row reduction, of course, you just get B, so you get the same one. In that case, B1 and B3 are the same as A1 and A3. This was a basis, so this would be a basis 2. However, you do not know what A was. It could also have been that A was this one. Uh, let's see. Like this. Can immediately see if you subtract the row over here. Oh, sorry. Uh, zero here. Subtract the row over there. And that you get uh, the same matrix B. But now, uh, A1 would be 1, 0, 1. And A3 would be 0, 1, 0. And if you would use the factors of B, you can never get a 1 here in the last position. So if A would have come from this matrix, then the columns of B can never span uh, the columns of A. So in that case, B1 and B3 would not be a basis of core A. So here, yes, there, no. So in general, it is not true that the columns of the reduced matrix uh, form a base for the original column space. So here, no, not true. And now this problem. I just erased a row of zeros and used the same names. Are the answers to those four questions true or false the same? Does it matter that we erased uh, um, a row of zeros? Well, curious to hear what you think about those four questions. In this case, let us discuss this on the forum below.